All right, guys. So we have a bunch of lights, we'll call it Christmas tree, going on on our 270,000 mile Toyota Highlander hybrid. And if you look here, it says check brake system, check hybrid system. The code, when you hook it up to the uh, OBD2 OBD port, is the code is P0AA6. Uh, so what if you do, if you go to troubleshooting on it, it's going to tell you to replace the hybrid battery system. You'll see, if you put your foot on the brake, it'll show it's ready to start. You try to start the system up. It's going to pop right back up. It's going to say check your hybrid system. Then it's not going to start. And you can't go anywhere. So, uh, I would not suggest just replacing the batteries for the hybrid system. Because it's going to be expensive and, yeah, it'll fix it. But that's not what you really need to do. So, I haven't found any videos on YouTube about how to do this or anything uh, but I'm going to show you guys what I'm going to do. First of all, we're going to take all the back seats, including the third row, out. We'll get that on some video because I don't see any videos on that. Then I'm going to show you the water that's in there. And I haven't looked yet, but I promise you there's water in there. We're going to find out where it's leaking, and I'm going to show you how to fix all this. So, if you go back through my videos, and you see where I had found a leak up front, kind of like this where the carpet's wet, is because the sunroof drains weren't leaking. So we got that fixed, but this is the rear seat. There shouldn't be any water right here, and it's on both sides. So, let's take all these seats out and see if we can't find where it's leaking. The passenger side's even worse. There's the vents that you got to clean these out every once in a while for your hybrid. So I know the battery's under here. Now we've got to figure out how to take these seats out. First, we're going to start with taking all this out. Now our third row is folded down right now with our carpet over it. So we'll take this out. Then we'll get to taking all that. Well, I wanted to flip my third row seat up. I was going to try to take this out. And I took these out. But this little tray is steel tight. So... Let's go ahead and take this row out right here and we'll come back to this. So I went ahead and took this tread plate off and it just kind of pops right out. But you can see, or I can see, I don't know if you can come through on the video, just how soaked this carpet is. So we've got lots of water in here. All right, next thing is to pop these little covers off and they just kind of pop forward and over there, same thing. Pop them off and then there's a bolt there. So we'll zip them out and go from there. And again, guys, I've never done this, so we're learning as we go. But you take these little panels off like this, and like this, and they'll expose where you could take bolts out. So that's the back. We'll slide this. We'll get them front two up here, and then we should be able to pull the seat out. And then we'll repeat the same thing on that one over there. All right, so this little tray right here just kind of pops out of these little holes here. And then this right here, there's these little caps you got to unscrew with your hands here, and these should pop out now. And that's all there was. Now, see, this is the water I'm talking about, guys. See how dirty it is? That water's been sitting here for a little while. So I've got to figure out where it's leaking from. I'm not sure what these little tubes here are. I don't know if it's leaking there or what, but we'll get the rest of this out. And see, we can't tell where it's leaking, get it all cleaned up. And Whew, we'll keep on investigating and to get the tray that goes across here you just slide these things off so that oh there's three of them it'll go forward and then there's a 10 millimeter bolt or nut i should say right here on both sides and then it just picks up so now this is the third row you can see where to undo your third row at so let's get on i've got the front two unbolted and everything but the cable that these pull to let them fall forward is stopping them from coming out. So I'm going to get this out and then we'll investigate that some more. All right. So it looks like this whole bar could come with it, but I just unbolted it 
here and there on both sides and that let the seat go and then I went ahead and unbolted the seat belt buckles and this seat belt from here and left the bar in there and pulled it all the way out so this is what it looks like underneath you can still see there's water here too now our batteries are up there so we got to figure out how to get them cables which come through here and over to this so I'm probably going to pop this out and see if I can let the cables go and then pull them through and then reroute them in later that's what I'm getting at so far I'll continue to look and uh, give you guys some updates but that's what we're looking like so far all right if I pop this out I can see there's two I don't know 10 millimeters right there anyway we're on unscrew that and see what there is to unhook behind there okay guys well still messing with this as you can see I got a whole panel off now uh, lots of little pieces of trim and everything you do it undo and everything just so you can take that full piece panel off right here just so you can get to this bolt because you can't get to it now you may be able to like uh, loosen this side up get underneath it and get to that bolt I just went ahead and took it all out and get it out of my way so let me pull that and see how easy it is to unconnect them so we could pull them out that way all right guys they are just the normal little retaining balls or whatever um, there's one marked red and there's more marked black here and of course I did not you know annotate which ones left or right so I will have to figure that out when I go to put it back together but after that uh, bolts right here is where the line goes through and it goes up and over this so you get your slack and you push it up you slide it to the side and it comes out here and when you put it back you just put it back in there pull your slack through the back again so there you go now that that's undone we'll go ahead and like pull that loose and then pull them through so we can get these seats out okay uh in case you didn't notice the thing I put on the screen, the red is the right and the black is the left. So the one with the red stripe is for the right side. So you snake them through, then you pull them out from the carpet and then you pick the seats up. Then you pull them out. Now I'm gonna roll this carpet forward and that should expose all my battery stuff. I may or may not take this panel off, depending on how easy it is to get the carpet out from under it and hopefully go back into it. So let me pull that forward and we'll see what we're looking at you can see the carpet's still wet all this looks pretty dry so i'm gonna guess in this little battery containment area it's gonna be full of water so before pulling this forward uh actually it does come out here pretty easy i'm thinking it's gonna go back in pretty easy so i don't think you have to take this off but you do have to take your vents off so it'll keep on going forward you get a screwdriver, pop these forward, and there's 10 millimeters in there each one. You should know this because you got to take these out and clean that little uh, filter. It's like a little screen filter on all three of these. You need to be cleaning about, I don't know, every oil change, every other oil change, something like that. Or if you live in a real dusty, dirty environment, dogs and all that, you want to clean it even more often. So I'm going to get these pulled out. We'll get the carpet row forward, and we'll see what we got down here. All right, well, that carpet rolled forward. I just kind of folded it and rolled it and it stands up. You can see, hopefully you can see on the camera, the water down there. That's just this one little area. I'm sure there'll be more over there. This plastic over here should just pull up. It may have a little tacky stuff on it. You may have to push, but there should be, shouldn't be, to my knowledge, anything holding it down. So we'll pull all this up and we'll get to looking. I do have the negative terminal on the battery unhooked. Um, before I move any of this actual stuff, if I move any of this stuff, I will go ahead and do some research because I just don't know anything about all this stuff. This is all new to me. Um, but I know it's got to be at least, from what I know about Toyota hybrids or this Highlander hybrid, it's going to be 300 volts. So you don't want to mess with that, especially with water around. But let me get all this out and take a peek at it. Hopefully we can just hit it with a wet back. Go ahead and hook everything back up. Start it test it out if it's good we'll put everything back together well i went ahead and took that little seat belt thing that was right here out of the way so i could look in there better and there is water all underneath this thing so i guess the best thing to do is do some research find out on un how to unhook it over there and then looks like it just unbolts and i should be able to just kind of slide it up out the way 
maybe I need to take the top off and inspect the battery cells and all that. I'm not worried about that right this second. I'm worried about getting all that water out of here. So for now, I'm going to do some research, see how to unhook it. I think I think it has something to do with that. But before I go to unhooking stuff and undoing things, I'll make sure. Uh, hopefully that's all it is, and then we can kind of unhook these right here. Unhook them from the back there, just where you're held down. Kind of pick it up and slide it out of the way so we can get all this cleaned up right, get the drains clean, uh, and see if the drains fell out or whatever it may be. So let me do some research. Like I said, I think this is it. I'll let you know. So I went ahead and went up to the regular battery and unhooked the positive side as well. So for what I can find out, you're going to unhook this right here. All right. And you're going to wait five minutes at least. And after five minutes, you can come and we can start working on it. And I'll show you how I figured everything else out about unhooking everything. So I guess while I'm waiting on five minutes, it won't hurt to go ahead and unhook this stuff because it's just right here. Okay. So, you pull this vent plug here. Make sure when you put it back in, it's back in the same hole. Or in the hole, I should say. You disconnect all these little things here that they don't want to come disconnected, but they do. There's some over there. You have this little cover right here. It just pops off. Then you have this anti-tamper piece right here. You put your needle nose in there and spread them out. One on this side of the tooth and one on this side of the tooth. You push down and turn. It'll pop up. As soon as it pops up, don't keep turning. This will come out. Then we'll take this bolt and this bolt out. And this is where we're going to disconnect the battery. So this is it. If you have um, the safety gloves and all that that's rated up to a thousand volts and all, this would be a smart place to use them. But just be very careful when hooking these. So you unhook these, and then when you pick, then you undo your, all your battery everywhere, and you'll pick this up and slide it out. And when you go put it back in, the lines are here, stay with the car. So the lines are here, you're going to make sure you get feedback through there. So when you set it down, you can bolt them down. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Underneath this plate, you get these two here. Make sure you remember which side goes to which. So the white side on the left here. Or passenger side and the red side on the driver's side there on the right you can see see the water down in there we are definitely having an issue these two wires will stay with the car it is imperative that you be very careful removing these and do not shock yourself so you're supposed to use even tools that are made for this but I don't have any of them so we're gonna very carefully and slowly unhook them i'll use like a towel or something to make sure my tools don't contact the sides here and we'll get them unhooked okay so i've got my double extension to make sure we're not touching the sides here i've got my safety roadkill towel here thanks roadkill y'all check out this website right here lots of cool stuff also has a youtube channel really cool guy so with me not touching anything i'll come through here this is a 10 millimeter and we'll take these two out so let me get them out all right now that's disconnected we'll go around and take out all the bolts around the outside these are all 12 millimeter you know you could tell which ones you have to disconnect and which ones you don't our front here there's two 10 millimeters you take off so you can get to these 12 millimeters so you can get that little cap off there Woo! all right that thing's uh little heavy guys there is our main drain it's kind of a dumbass design truthfully because it scoops down there and then sits back there but there's only one drain who it's got a little filter in it of course it'll be easy to stop up with dirt or whatever you know having kids or just over the ages now this has 270,000 miles on it what I'll do is I'll go ahead and take this plug out. I'll clean up the screen real good. Get all this cleaned up real good. Do the same thing in the back there. I still haven't found where it's leaking. 
but I'm gonna assume it's leaking up here and coming through and sitting here but you know what they say when you assume um, I don't know I'll continue looking for it see if I can find the leak if I find where it's leaking I'll let you guys know but there's still water back there in the corners too so I just don't know let me get it all cleaned up all right I'm gonna get the wet back out and get the rest of this I pulled that plug and a lot of it drained out but let's look at this plug real quick see all that yeah anyway let's get it all cleaned up all right guys as far as I could tell the only water I could see coming in is here here over to here and maybe dripping through over to there so I don't know I already got that all cleaned up and the battery put back in oops sorry that blood everywhere I'm gonna go ahead and hey some of that stuff sharp uh I'm gonna go ahead and uh clean all this up too but before I do all that I'm gonna hook all that back up we'll start up and make sure everything's cleared out well guys so far so good no lights on except from seat belt because I don't have it on right a second no stuff on the dash so I'm gonna have to reset all my clocks and all that stuff but I'm gonna go ahead and drive it around oh engine just kicked clicked off let's see if I can hit the gas and yeah click right back on so that's good okay so the hybrid system's working well we're gonna drive it around for a little while and make sure nothing pops back up and uh then i'll put uh, all the rest of it back together well i drove one mile everything worked like it should i just took my seatbelt off so i got the light going on there the engine's still running right this second um everything did great so i'm gonna go ahead and get everything put back together if i run into anything putting it back together i will show you uh what I do but I don't foresee anything I think it's just putting it back together just the way it came out so we'll get all this put back together and hey don't pay somebody four to eight thousand dollars to replace your battery set or even spend hundreds of dollars replacing each cell when it might not even be that guys check for make sure there's no water in there this Highlander including the center thing man it has a draining problem so I might go ahead and the drains in the very back where the water looks like it's coming through I might drill through the center of them uh just so it has an extra extra drain and i can't leave the drain plug all the way out because i don't want water splashing back up in there but if i put a little drain a uh, little hole in the drain plug maybe some of it will drain out uh before it gets to this drain which is a pretty bad design right where the drain goes down is right where that little sensor is i guess that sensor's there to tell you hey you got water down here and it's 300 volts so either way um guys don't pay somebody a bunch of money to fix this just do it yourself real quick Appreciate you.